What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Sweat It Out podcast. Today, we have an amazing special individual. He's a health and fitness professional. He's a true coach, a true advocate. Guys, let me tell you, you've probably seen him before on the Netflix show, Strong. Ooh. Please help me welcome Wesley Okerson. How's it going, brother? Uh, thank you, man. Thank you for the intro. It's very nice. By the way, I just want to say I love that sign. Thanks, man. Thanks. Man. Thanks. Really we just got it in a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> you're one of the first, really? you're, you're one of the so first new? few to be on it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Brand good. I'm new. glad I complimented it. It looks good. <laughs> Thanks, you know? man. Appreciate it. We, we, we waited how long? For I was it? like, it was a <laughs> hellish, like three and a half months be going back and forth with this company from China. Like, uh, so who, do you guys design that or do you kind of give someone in, um, the kind uh, it's of, our logo. Like, yeah. It's, it's our, our logo. logo. Perfect. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Appreciate thanks man. Helps, uh, helps kind of wrap up the studio we have in here. So yeah, it. it's like, Joe, it's like Joe Rogan's new podcast or his, did you see his like, Oh man, spread? it's oh. wild. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's podcast studio goals for us. You know, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people were hating on it, you know, cause it yeah, he did. As... I did see he got some hate. I was like, man, he went for it. Like, that's like his thing. So you got to right. give him, he wasn't trying to appease everybody. He was like, nah. this is my thing. Screw yeah. everybody. Yeah, every, everyone's trying to chime in on on with their own opinion on what everyone else should be doing with their lives. Yep. Like, listen, don't you have other things to worry about than like what Joe Rogan's studio looks like? <laughs> you know, hey, like if that's keyboard warriors, man. Yeah, it's like, keyboard warriors. You know, you've made it when haters come out. That's yeah, right. yeah, seriously, right? When they start when they start so, shitting on you for your podcast studio, then you're like, all right, I made it. I'm good. <laughs> hey, uh, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brother. Um, I know we were talking about some off-topic stuff before we jumped on the podcast and. We definitely want to dive into some of that because that was definitely a very some insightful, insightful stuff. Um, I know we start off by talking about some stuff about, you know, COVID, some of the changes going on in the health and fitness industry and some of the changes that you feel that are going to stick and continue on. Let's dive a little bit deeper in that, you know, kind of hear yeah. your thoughts, you know, being a health and fitness professional, um, somebody yeah. who's been in the field for a long time. Where do you see that heading and, and oh, what, man. Do, what do you want to see and what don't you want to see? Yeah, well, it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's such a, it's like a crazy thing because it's now, especially this whole shift in the past six months since the end of March, it's like, you know, one minute, um, you know, working in this private gym in Beverly Hills, which I loved because I trained that and I had a lot of great clients there. And then, you know, shut down, gone, just, you know, literally overnight and nothing has been reopened in the LA County area, which is the biggest county in the country. Crazy. And they still won't open gyms. They open them for about two weeks and they shut them back down. So every trainer who's doing like in-person coaching has had to figure out the workaround, you know? Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, you're, you're kind of scared to death because it's like, you know, the first like 60 to 90 days, it was, you know, chaos. It, it just, just no one knew anything really. Right. And they're showing you what, what's going on in New York city. And you're like, Jesus, man, this is, this is like scary. Right. So, People are now trying to figure out how are we going to get back into like person to person training if you shut down every gym. And oh, by the way, all those gyms now are like so many of them I know are going out of business. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, and, that, and that's like the worst thing because the one I know the one I trained at, I mean, they are probably going to close their doors and either relocate or, re or figure out a, a, new, um, God, a new platform. It's, you know, mm -hmm. and then kind of with that, with the whole idea of like in person training everything kind of shifted immediately. Everything went online, right? So everyone's doing like one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, and that kind of popped through in a way that you've never seen before. But how do you really monetize that? You know, what's like the right number? What do you, right. you know, and then all these people are trying different things and free classes and charge, for the, and it's, it kind of is a little chaotic now. And I think the dust is finally starting to settle. Places are starting to open back up, but you still can't run like group fitness classes the way you used to be able to, right? Yep. 100%. You know, sweating and really getting after it and the high energy. I mean, some places are getting away with a little more than others, but, you know, now it's a lot of these like Zoom classes, which, I mean, me personally, in person is really the, the only real way I can connect with uh, a client, an athlete or somebody because online is great. I'm not saying you can't, but you just don't, the interaction is not the same. The coaching is never going to be the same, right? Mm -hmm. When you're face to face with somebody, you can look somebody in the eye and, and you know, you really, you, you feel that, you know, I mean, I don't think it's like BS when you're 
getting the energy off somebody in, in oh, it's proximity. Huge. It's huge. It's like, it's, um, you know, Josh and I, when, you know, other coaches on the podcast, we've talked about this where, you know, new challenges come out of this, you know, where it's like queuing is not the same, you know, you can't really touch anybody, you know, so, you know, some of that feedback you, you used to get, you're not going to get it anymore. You know, you got to find other ways to, you know, look for the, look for some sort of feedback and you have to really just hone in on other, you know, sen sensory skills and skill sets to be able to, you know, help this person achieve, you know, what they're trying to achieve, right. you know, what you're trying to right. help them achieve in. So it, it does challenge you. And, and at the same time, yeah, it, it is, it is a little um, hardening to, to not be able to be there in person. Um, you right. know, at the same time, you know, I think there's, there's opportunity to grow. And I think there's a lot of opportunity where it can be some, come something great. If there's certain fixes, understandings, you know, maybe there's some kind of like eventually something where they can format something that can help guide trainers on how to be able to be better coaches right. over, you know, a yeah, virtual right. class and how, be, how to be able to cue properly and how to be able to do other certain things right. to be able to deliver more value. Um, I think eventually right. that will come. Um, do, do we know when? Probably not. But eventually I do see something like that coming because like we said earlier, it's, it's, it's going to change. And, you know, it's yeah. definitely not going to go backwards, um, even though gyms are always going to remain. But we know that the, the online virtual fitness space is going to keep going up. Uh, and right. you've seen numbers go up for even gadgets and fitness products, you know, oh are, going, are selling like crazy, going up. Right. And, you know, of course, you know, at home portable fitness equipment and all that stuff is going up. So people are seeing that, you know, hey, we're able to do some stuff with with these other tools where maybe they weren't as, you know, hot before. Which, you know, when right. gadgets did come up, they were hot because they were new in 2014 around there was like the it thing. And then around, you know, 2015, 2016, started to get a slowing down. 2017, it was like, oh, well, yeah, it's cool. Track your steps, do this. Right. But now it's like now people are really using it because it, you know, helps them with their online this or whatever it is that they're targeting and they're just finding other ways to use it. So, you know, is, is there going to be a change? Definitely. I mean, I, I think the scariest thing is always like, and I'm sure that you can, uh, you can attest Wes is, you know, how do you become a better coach in the first place when you're just starting out? You gotta, you gotta fucking That's coach people, right? Like you That's gotta get truth. in front of their face and you gotta coach a them. lot of people, a lot of people, a lot. You know, yeah. I think probably, I mean, when I started, I was, I mean, I was 18, 18, 19 when I got my first certification, it was, um, a company called NSPA actually. Mm. Um, I don't even know if they're around. And I worked at like a, it was an athletic club back in like the like late eighties, early nineties. I mean, I, I was, this was like my dad and his friends, they would go to these athletic clubs and it was like, you know, they work out and then it was like a social club. Right. They would like drink and hang out, but you right. had, had like triathletes and they'd work out real hard, but then they would go mm -hmm. eat like shit sometimes and drink a bunch. And yeah. I worked at a place like that, that was like had transitioned into a more, gym atmosphere but you know i had to just log hours you know yeah so the truth is i didn't know what i was doing i was just kind of coaching what i did and i feel like that's how everyone of kind of starts out though you know yeah totally and 100 but imagine now you want to become a trainer or a coach and you're only able to do it virtually yeah right that's a, that's the scariest thing that's for me you know it's like how how are these young coaches or these people that want to get into coaching, how are they going to become really good coaches if they're just staring at a screen and like, okay, an hour later they cut you off and they don't really get to right. see, like, it's so hard to, the big thing about fitness, right. And, and the, the most impactful thing in my mind is the emotional aspect of it, right? Like how you feel yeah. before compared to after how you feel working with the, with the trainer or the coach, how you feel in the environment, you were talking about group fitness, right? Right. Probably the number one thing that makes group fitness so powerful for so many people is that community atmosphere. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, so now all of that is gone and, and probably not coming back at the same volume that it was yeah. before. How is that going to really affect our field as a whole? Are people, are, are young, younger coaches just going to try to pretend as you were kind of saying, you know, with TikTok when we were off the air, like, right. are they just going to become influencers? Are they just going to become quote unquote, like fitness content creators? And what does that yeah. mean? Like what type of content yeah, do people yeah. really need? I think, well the, well, the first thing is going back to the group fitness in person is, at least for me, when I've done, when I do group class, whether it's like CrossFit or even if it's like a spin class or this, I like the idea of competition. That's, mm -hmm. I think, what drives me in a class is that I always like to compete with not only myself, but like there's always people in a class, right? Yeah, I'm not going to let anyone beat me. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you just, you want to win, right? If you're like that guy, you're just, it, it makes it more fun. It definitely pushes you more. And you feed off that kind of energy, especially in like the CrossFit world. I mean, I know that they are pivoting and moving outside into outdoor, but it's still not the same mm-hmm. being in a box, right. you know, and training like that. Loud and music, really chalk, yeah. oh, all yeah, that. The, the Just, feel, the environment, yeah. everything. And also too, it's like, yeah. you, you, Josh, you were, you were saying, you know, it's scary to even think like, guy, like if you think about it, we've heard from some top health and fitness professionals and coaches, how they've had challenges coaching their people online. And like we're saying, how about a new person who is coming on, who's never even had hours of experience coaching anybody in person and yet masters and professionals and and world renounced leaders are having trouble. It makes you this think this person is not going to have any trouble. So, you know, it's definitely one of those areas where, you know, there has to be some education. There has to be some kind of, um, you know, program there has to be some kind of like knowledge um pour pour it into that because you need you need it in order to right. keep you know the safety and the value up for you know whatever clients that those coaches are working with and that way they make right. sure that they receive that correctly because i think that's another thing yeah as much as virtual coaching is going to keep growing up going and online coaching you know we're also going to see certain areas that are going to need massive improvement to keep you know quality control safety right. um you know having well, these these uh clients not getting injured. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean you talked to me like you, so much through 2D like through this you know yeah. format like I someone squatting straight on in this plane like how, unless someone's creating which maybe someone does like some sort of 360 view right that I can like, spin around and see because you can, you know, especially if someone's messing around with heavy weight and you're and they're mm. starting a new, whatever it is, they're not getting spotting at all, which is another whole other world, you know? Right. That's it, dude. You're so, going to create it. It's going to be called Okerson 360. Hey, dude, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> we'll buy a little pivot camera that follows you around. Yeah. Or and, and just to kind of piggyback off of what both of you were saying, right? Anthony, with the whole, like, there needs to be some sort of education system built in place so that trainers can grow and you mentioned you know a lot of gyms are closing and they're never going to open back up where are these trainers going to be able to get these reps in you know where are they going to be able to learn how to actually train someone on someone else's dime you know like trainers are not going to be you know most trainers are not going to be working at equinox anymore getting 75 to or 65 to 75 percent of their pay cut doing floor you know go, right. going oh, sorry going around and and you know working for someone else they're like listen i need to make money because i gotta support right. myself i'm just gonna go out on my own but with that comes a right. cost of of less less formal education just being thrown in your face without you having to seek it out yeah okay right there you know you said like so you have the, the coaching the education from like one-on-one training so pause with that and then think of the idea of right now Take where social media is growing, like this, like exponential growth, right? And you see in the fitness world, um, like a fitness influencer, and I'm not going to get into like what's bad, what's good, what, you know, I, I, maybe I'll talk a little bit about that, but you see, so if I'm someone and maybe I've never coached or trained someone in my life, but I could have a mass of like 500,000 followers and I could start post, or posting workouts, people could start doing them. But here's the thing, it, that, that's people trying to recreate what you're doing. That's, some of this stuff is so advanced and you're selling programs that people have no business doing that kind of training, but they just want to be you, they want to look like you, they want to train like you. And there's this huge gap of like, you don't go from a pretty sedentary to you know, clean and pressing 135 pounds overhead right. without, without one-on-one coaching. That's right. yeah. It's and not gonna thing- happen through Instagram posts or even yeah, like a exactly. two minute tutorial. You know, and that's the thing, too, is like, you know, like, hey, OK, there's nothing wrong with doing that advanced movement. But the problem is, like you said, a lot of people only see that constantly on these coaches pages and then they want to create it. Also, they want to recreate that from their page because also, too, some of them just want free content. And they're like, OK, great. I'm going to do this great hard exercise. Cool. It looks cool. It's nice. Yeah. It, um, gets gets me sweaty, gets my heart rate up. Oh, I feel good. Okay, cool. I'm going to start doing this over and over again. There's no plan. There's no system. There's no routine. There's no, not even knowing if you can, if you're even supposed to do those movements, you're just grabbing it for free off of your, of whoever coaches page, whether they're a good coach or not, you know? So I think there's a lot of problems, which has been going on 
before, you know, even right. since in 2014, 2015, you've been seeing as fitness grows on social media, there's been more of that. And I've even heard cases of people getting hurt, you know, doing wrong things, not getting the right information. Um, and then what happens is great. You have a 500, 600,000 following or a million, anybody's going to, and a hurting you know, at a disc and a hurting, <laughs> and you know. people are going to look at you because of that, you know, and then you got a, right. an, an awesome coach over here who's taken years and years of coaching has been taking hours and hours of reps with people, maybe has a thousand to 2000, 3000 followers at most gets no right. love, gets yeah. no love at None. all. And they're actually posting, uh, and I'm following those guys because I'm actually getting information from them. Right. You know, right. they're those coaches where I'm like, you know, they really do a good job of explaining it. You know, yep. they don't have like the tripod set up with like the, the, the $3,000 Nikon with the lighting. And the <laughs> it's just like, they're just point and shoot. It looks good, but they're, you're, you know that that is going to help me. I mean, I posted me doing like a partial clean and it wasn't pretty. And I even captioned it still working my way up. You know, yeah. just mm -hmm. to show that, like, look, I'm, you know, there's, there's no ceiling. You're always trying to, at least I hope right. everyone's trying to get better at something or try something new, you know? And cor yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think like, for example, on both ends, like, I think it also goes to say where maybe, you know, if, if the true leaders in the health and fitness field want to see change, want to see quality, I think also too, it gives them, it gives those leaders an opportunity to say, Hey, why aren't people paying attention to our content? How can we get better also to at delivering content or how can we get yeah, better yeah. at showcasing our stuff and growing our social media? Cause you do see that too. You also get a lot of, you know, health and fitness professionals who are top leaders, but they don't even pay attention or even want to learn about social media or they just post yeah. whatever or whatever it is. Yeah. And also too, we got to understand as times go, you know, as you know, we get older and as, technology gets, you know, more advanced, we also have to roll with certain things, you know, same thing as when the radio, the TV marketing changes. So I think it is important now more than ever for some of these health and fitness leaders who are world renowned have taught many individuals, probably like ourselves through, co right. uh, through seminars, workshops to start understanding the game of social media. So that way their, their true impact of value can really be impactful. And right. now people actually want to listen to some of their content. Um, and then later on you can purchase, or you can actually get into the more straight on technical or the more like, okay, right. talky talk worthy content where here, okay, how can we drive value, but still make it where it's like, okay, somebody of this age or somebody of this platform would enjoy seeing this and want to engage with it, but it's still providing a ton of value more than even what some of these other individuals are doing. Right. Right. I mean, what's your, what's your take on that? How do we get, you know, to kind of circ bring it all together, right? Is, you know, there, there's a lot of trash out there. There's no doubt about that. There are also a lot of good coaches. I think the most frustrating part for the quality coaches is that people are so drawn to that trash content. Yep. Is it, right? is it, is it too much to ask for that we have like some sort of oversight maybe? Way? Yeah, right. I think that that like would be it, a good does call. Someone, like come up with a bill maybe that says, Hey, look, we need to start. And I'm not saying that you're going to tell people like, Hey, you can't post whatever you want. I'm saying if you're going to post something that's fitness related and it's in this world, you have to at least show that, you have some formal education in what you're doing For sure. right. instead of like anyone just posting whatever they want, because it, it becomes this mass amount of information. Yeah. People don't know where to go. People should no they start, idea. should they start fact checking fitness posts? Like should they do they political fact, they, ones. Yeah, they might as well. They fact check yeah, everything. Might as, they might as well. Like, Oh, sorry, your bullshit fit tea really doesn't do, doesn't, <laughs> yeah, doesn't really help people lose weight um, or become less bloated. Um, waste that, that is what actually is that? a good point. Waste I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy because they allow that, that kind of misinformation out there with, you know, a belt, you know, a shake belt or something ridiculous mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. Like, it, it's sad because it's preying on, on people who are, that actually maybe want to work out, but they see that and they go, no, I'd rather just strap a belt on and sit and watch TV because right. the guy has abs. So, I mean, definitely. I'm yeah, eight abs, minute, you know, eight minute abs? Not. You mean if I do this eight minute ab workout twice a week, I'm going to be, I'm going to lose 40 pounds and be shredded? Like, I can't wait to start. Dude, there, you know, <laughs> there's a thousand. Yeah. I mean, at least, at least start with the ridiculous stuff. You know what I'm saying? At least I mean, like, let's push. 
yeah, that's start that's, there. I mean, at least at some level, I mean, assume that we're all, you know, above a third grade, like, you know, this is just to make money. It's just a marketing ploy. Right. So like, let's get some of that stuff under control. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, it's, it's insane. All that I, I mean, that's been the most frustrating part for me, you know, trying to sell my online products is, you know, I'll build out this amazing program for someone, you know, six week program. And I know it's really going to make a difference in, in their lives. And they're just like, you know, but why aren't we doing flows? Like, why aren't we doing complexes? Like, bro, you need to goblet squat. You yeah. know, like that's you what you need. That's what you need. Well, I feel like, you know, I was doing a lot more up-tempo stuff and we were doing ladders and circuits like, well, that's great, but you need to get the basics down and then we can get into AMRAPs and <laughs> right. And then we can do AMRAPs and stuff and you can move around and stuff, yeah. but it's super important that you understand how to move first yeah. before you start moving yeah. fast. Yeah. Like, I mean, basic, like people can't understand the idea of like hip hinge or something. Right. Yeah, they want to swing a kettlebell with their arms and throwing this thing over their head and switching hands. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep. You're going to break mm -hmm. a mirror, first of all. <laughs> and, and, no, and the other thing is now, now, now everybody and your mothers are trainers. Right. You know, everybody. Right. But so, I think that goes back to this point about setting that standard, you know, right? Yep. Like there's got to be something yeah. that we can all fall back well, on. They wanted a license training. I know they wanted to come up with a training license for years, for a few years now, but because of the certification companies, obviously they don't want that to happen. But you know, I, th I thought at one point that would have been a good idea to have some kind of like license. Well, license. even, even to the certification point, and you know, I'd like to get your take on this as well Is you know, how many times have you gone into a workshop or have you gone into a certification and someone who has taken that cert already or taken that workshop, it goes where, where there's a test out portion. And they're like, listen, don't think about how you would really train this person in real life. Think about how they want you to train for the test. How ridiculous is that? That's that insane. people yeah. are still saying that, like, listen, you know, you need this cert to be able to train people, but the cert actually isn't going to help you train people. Uh, I, I go crazy of like the, the it's just, it is a part of, it's a racket. You know, you're, mm. you're, oh, you got to retest every two years and here, what, what's $500 to research? Like, it's all money. Yeah. Don't make it $500, make it legitimate or something like, right. you know, and then, and then 20% of the test is, um, this like marketing to clients. I remember right. I, I, or even I like how high the mirrors are up off the floor. I remember that was in my yeah. CSES test. I'm like, first of all, why do I care how fucking tall the mirrors up off the yeah. floor? If someone hits the I mirror with a dumbbell, it's getting smashed. Yes. Like, it doesn't matter yeah. if it's a foot or five feet. If they hit it, it's getting broken. Uh, there, there was like five or six questions I completely missed. And it was like, how would you market to a client? And there was like this whole played out section of like what you would say. I'm like, are, are they joking here? Is it, this can't be real. Right. I'm it's, like, I'm literally guessing right now. I have no idea. <laughs> it's not on the test, yeah. It's, it's outrageous, man. Some of the stuff that you see, you know, but on the flip side, so that we don't all sound like a Debbie Downer the whole time. There are good, yeah. there are, there are really good coaches out there that are doing really great things. You know, we had John Russin on the podcast. I don't know if you know John at all, but you know, amazing uh, physical therapist, amazing strength coach, someone who, really has taken the time to do the research beforehand right. before they built out the thing uh before they built out or before he built out his certification you know and, and he even brought people in like sarah jameson i know he talked with you know some kettlebell coaches he's got cliff uh Harksky with him I, i'm gonna butcher his last name but you know so he brought in a bunch right. of other good coaches to help facilitate the growth of it even more you know and right I think too often that there's like this scarcity mindset. Like if Mendez and I are both training in, in Miami, like, Oh, well, he's going to take all my clients. If I work with him and, and teach yeah. him a couple of things, if I get Mendez good at the mace and he's going to take my mace clients away from me, like fuck that. That's not going to happen. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know? Training is also such a you know individualized thing. A lot of times, right. you right. know, I, I, you know, I know that I know the best coaches ever worked with, um, you know, Benny Wiley's one of them. He's at the OU strength coach now. And um, just like sometimes the clients that are going to be with this, this certain coach probably wouldn't react well with me, you know? Oh, I'm, I'm difficult to work all, with for sure. <laughs> tell my clients that. will tell you that. <laughs> I love you. Uh, and oh, by the way, what you were saying before <laughs> about um, not to sound like a Debbie Downer when we were talking about like online content, I was going to say that um, like Squat University, there's those guys on Instagram. Oh, they, put out, they they put out such good content yep. and it's mm -hmm. free. And I'm always going that every day you can you can literally pick a really good piece of uh, a, a movement up for like patellar tendonitis or something. And yeah. 
stuff like that is so shout out to squat university yeah move you too they're another good one i like how they like paint on the the one guy i always forget his name you know and they'll show like how the muscle action works and stuff yeah i think i think like that's where more of the top health and fitness professional i think they can get more creative like some of these guys who do stand out because there are delivering content that makes sense to the viewer and to the whoever's watching it where it does right. entertain them but they 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 still have a good underlying value behind it where obviously later on if those per people want to work with you then your true system is going to be behind it on now you're really now you're really hitting home run with that but i think it's just like that right. these guys are creative and they found a way to re to be able to catch people's attention but still deliver right. a lot of value in whether it's an entertaining funny or whatever kind of way um that's gonna get these users to want to engage with them but i think it's more of that of right. having some of these top leaders doing more of that more often i think that would help tremendously to at least you know start right. easing some of the of the of the problems going on and then eventually i think too like we're also, too, where we have to dive into something that can show professionals that are good who know what they're doing. Okay, well, if you're having problems with this, then this is what you need to do with this. Vice versa. If it's somebody who's a new trainer and you understand the online game or you understand how social media works, okay, well, this is where you need to spend more time in because if not, you're not going to be able to work with people here uh, properly online right. or through social media, but that's great that you know that, but now you need to learn more of this and, and, right. and it goes back and forth. Do you think, do you yes, think, totally. that, I agree. do you think that people are afraid to put themselves out on social media because they're afraid people aren't going to like their true personality, right? Like we, there's this, there's this kind of like facade in fitness, right? Where, and you know, we laugh about it all the time. You see these girls like doing kettlebell swings or doing burpees or something and they like, have, have the shit inning grin on their face. It's like, you're yeah, not, yeah. you're not happy doing that. No yeah. one is happy. No one is smiling ear to ear yeah. while doing burpees yeah. or like, you know, pulling 400 pounds off the ground. Like, no, yeah, you, yeah, no. you know, so do you think that be because of this false facade of, of happiness and everything has to be like so much fun and yay, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm here to inspire you today. It's like, no, I had a shit yeah. day. <laughs> you're going to have shit days. Yeah. So like, you know, we're going to get through it together though. You know, do you think yeah, that people I, I, are yeah, afraid lot, to show that side of them? I think a lot, I think a lot of, I think a lot of coaches are for sure, because, you know, they, they grind it out in like their hole of a gym and that, you know, but the cool thing is I think that's starting to change a little bit. Right. Cause you're starting to see like some of the, that kind of vibe come out, especially with like the indoor competitions that, that have been going on, like high mm -hmm. rocks and, yep. and yep. some of these things. And, um, and I love that competition by the way. Um, oh, it's epic. Yep. Um, I, was doing I did one. I did wow. New York. Actually, I think I saw yeah, you in New York. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's where um, exactly. I was making fun of him too, doing those farmers carries with no gloves on. I was like, bro, you're from Miami. You're so I'm from New York too. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, there's no, yeah, I'm like, there's no way that he's gonna be. He's like, bro, my hands are so cold. Dude, I think I did like <laughs> Thirty up and down. I couldn't move my fingers at all. I was like, well, now you know how it was like growing was up where I was. Freezing, freezing. By the way, that the pro division was, uh, I mean, I, I was pretty ready for it. <clears throat> and I remember going into that competition. Sorry, I'm like segueing out into this. No, but, it's um, good. It's good. All good. Um, I was kind of like, all right, you know, I, I was ready for it. And I felt good. And like right out of the gate, you know, the, I mean, these guys are moving, you know, everyone's at, you know, the first kilometer, they're moving at like a, probably like a sub seven minute pace. The problem is you're going, I got to slow the F down because you hit the first, uh, I think skier, not the sk skier is the first thing. Mm -hmm. You hammer that and then you're off the run again. Then you come back and you're in that, that 400 pound sled push. Gosh, and yes. dude, that is, uh, you know, you, everyone just gets fucking leveled on that thing. <laughs> just, you just see bodies around the yeah, thing. Just not budging over, at all. Holding their hands, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, just the faces. I have a picture of like, you know the, the awkward situations like you're, you're oh, yeah. trying to stand up and push your arms are buckling and mm. yeah i mean that was that was a great competition and I, and I think that like opened up like a new world of like you know this like indoor it's kind of like an ocr crossfit competition yeah, like a hybrid. which i thought was really cool and yeah, they really i know I, i'll tell you something like you know and in, in like in any competition there's always things that can be fix change anything but i think they did a really good job in the sense of like trying to figure out something that are movements that you know 
people can do. People can actually do. You know, yeah. and, and you're not you're right. not work up to a one rep max and, deadlift and go clean and clean exactly. and jerk not like two twenty five. Like, weights, you know. My dad's not gonna be able to do that. No. <laughs> like, but you know, you know yeah. people could do wall ball tosses, people right. could do burbies, people can do handstand walking is one thing that's yeah. so hard. Farmer carries right. that takes you know skill i mean you right. have to have the joint requirement to be able to do that you yeah. know like any, Even anything in crossfit pull up the right way right um you know you have like the shoulder mobility you need for all that stuff i mean it, that takes years of for a lot of people undoing things you know mm, that's right a lot yeah. of undoing tight shoulders and lats to even be able to like overhead squat properly let alone right. try to start snatching weight i mean off the floor. back to your point about getting a coach you know so many we see it all the time down here in miami people are like well you know your your rates are really high it's like because i'm a good fucking coach yeah like you wouldn't go to a doctor and be like, listen, like it's a thousand bucks for this procedure. I might have to go to like yeah. some guy yeah. in West Miami yeah. who's like working out of a working out of a storage unit because it's like yeah. sixty bucks. Like, what are you? Fu- are you kidding? The funny me? thing is that shit actually happens. Oh yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> it goes it on over here. Yeah. It's like you're gonna bite on this pen. We we don't really do. This <laughs> yeah, stuff, yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna give you this tattoo, but I'm gonna do it with a ballpoint pen. Yeah. You know, like I'm just gonna use the pen cap and dip it in some fucking ink, and then yeah. it's like. Yeah, sure. You're gonna save a little bit of money in the short term. Sharp, but you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm also gonna close my eyes while I do it. You know, but we're gonna get yeah. there. You need, you need Actually, some dude just got in trouble for doing dentistry on a hoverboard. I don't. You, this oh, I saw that. Dentistry. Yeah, I saw that. Right, and he pulled. He pulled someone's tooth out that he wasn't supposed to. I mean, sorry, I, I didn't just bring that up. No, 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 no it's great. Funny. No, it's great. I mean, just so goes to show. It, you I mean, it, you're like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you, like you know the fitness industry isn't alone in in the chaotic you know right the yeah, structure that they have for well now for, that we're talking about chaotic this is another thing too like how about all all that all the chaotic content that you see in the fitness space too in the health space of people doing this crazy shit of like we you know we talking about jumping backflips on bozu balls while uh, catching a basket running up a stairmaster with a band or like getting watermelons smashed on you while you do sit ups yeah. like, come on guys well, that's getting, the getting a, that's a swing that. to the kick in the abs while you're jumping doing jump squats on a, what is that shit that's shock value that's what's happening in like that's what you see on like tiktok now and um you know I, I'm going to shit on TikTok a little bit because it, it is okay. just a, a, a free for all of, of whatever gets your eyeballs on something. So, I mean, I, I've seen stuff for like people jumping off like a 70 foot cliff and hitting the water the wrong way. Yeah. And it's like graphic content. I'm like, that dude probably has like a lacerated liver, you know? Tick, TikTok and, is like the 4chan of, of social media forums, you know? Like 4chan is the wild, wild west of forums. I would say TikTok is like the wild well, west of social it's, media. It's just crazy because now people, it's like, instead of helping people who are injured or something happened, they'd rather just sit there and record it. What, are you? And it's just yeah. like, guys, are you going to come help these people or are you going to fucking sit yeah. there and record Yeah, the guy just broke three of his ribs and collapsed a along. Views. Oh, yeah. so your million views are more important than that person's life. And and the, and the honest truth is yes because they you know people are just doing this all day. Yeah. I mean, I've talked to people and like forty five minutes will go by and they don't even know it. And some girl, watched- some girl literally walked into me while I was walking into the into the office today. Like literally walked. I was like, "What are you doing?" You know, like yeah. that's a big problem too. People yeah. like walking off a cliff in Hawaii because they're oh yeah not taking only a selfie, selfie but. They're just staring down at their phone like this Crazy. all day. Crazy. Yeah. Do, have you guys seen um, Social, the Social Dilemma? Dilemma? No, yeah. not yet. No, no. I'm kind of afraid to watch it with how much I'm on my phone for uh, work. My, you know? my girl Jenny's watched some of it. She's told me like, "Babe, you, you gotta watch. You gotta. We gotta watch this together." But she's told me some stuff already that they've been saying. But no, I haven't watched it. Yeah, I think that the overriding theme is like what we're talking about. It's the behavioral patterns of people, and basically, you've got the human brain is going up against essentially what they build of these supercomputers from the best programmers in the world for the last. So like the exponential growth of computing power over the last 10 years, they said has gone up um, a trillion times. It's like, it, it's an unthinkable number. So we're losing the battle of, against the computer. So a computer is figuring out what you like to see and some, and all these patterns are, algorithms just keep getting better and better and I, that's what we were talking about before the TikTok. these guys the company guide dance has these programs have created something that is addictive to the point where you know the company's being valued at 50 billion dollars and you have the president 
trying to shut down the company. Now the sale apparently is going to go through and they're That's saying Oracle, like a right? year. Yeah. They're going to sell to Oracle, Oracle and Walmart. Right. And they're, they're valued at $60 billion and in, they're saying to be as worth, worth as much as a hundred billion in, in the next year. So it is going to be like a juggernaut of, I mean, the way they're talking, it's going to overtake Instagram yeah. with ease in the next few years if it happens. I would say just least, shorten up our attention span. In the next three years, we're going to see something crazy happen next two to three years with, with IG and TikTok and all these platforms and it's going to be insane. right. I mean, what do, what do we, we do were is... saying about, go oh, ahead. sorry. No, go ahead, please. Uh, about um, fitness and like I was saying, who is going to be the guy or someone that's going to go, hey, let's do like a fitness channel within the app or let's figure out how to create content for like, you know, Specific. fitness influence or whatever it's going to be. And it's going to be like probably a one-off of TikTok. I guarantee mm -hmm. they figure out some yeah. sort of offset right, so or channel. Who are you nationally recognized with? How many search do you have? How much right. education on there? Have you trained anybody in person? Yeah, how no? many, how many okay. people? Your you grandmother? Know. Okay, perfect. <laughs> they, they view, that's Definitely it. needs yeah. to be regulated. I mean, how do, how, do, how do we as coaches, right, that understand the pros and cons probably better than anyone of social media, how do, how do we relay that to the people that we work with or even like people in our own family? I, my sister is so addicted to her phone, you know, but not doing right. anything on it. Like doing right. nothing all day. I'm like, well, how are you? How do you get any work done? You're just on this phone all the time. You don't even know how to use the phone, really. You know. Right. Yeah. How do we get it out there? Well, I mean, we're. I think the pandemic. One thing is it's done also is it's kept people inside and gotten us even more out of shape. Right. Oh, 100. As a whole, you have people who have been like holed up, eating crappy, scared to death. Um, don't want to go outside for whatever reason it might be. It might be riots in your city or fires in the Pacific Northwest or, or your COVID, whatever it may be. People are like, I'm not going outside. And so now like, what are the odds that person's going to start doing fitness online? Yeah. Right. Right. I feel like that's, that's a hard sell for someone who's not even doing it to begin with to now do it over their computer. Um, so how do you reach those people to start moving more? Um, how do you create uh, awareness for, you know, I, I think companies like Spartan does a really good job. I mean, Joe DeSena, the owner, does a good job. Like, like he really is pushing for, for to get, I forgot the number he wants. He wants like 20 million people to move more or some crazy number. That'd be amazing. He was on Rogan's podcast and it was really good. Um, I'll have to listen for that. It was we a really got, good what talk. What we got to do is just, we got to get all the biggest fitness companies to just throw massive ad dollars at TikTok and Instagram. Now we need like to lobbying. Get in front of everybody. <laughs> we need lobbying. We need governmental lobbying. True. What we they, they do. They, someone, a senator or someone needs to step up and start to take a hold because. I mean, but you the, look at those guys, they're all out of shape. You know? That's, that's, that's the sad truth. You I know? mean, they're, they're sitting, even with COVID, right? They're sitting here, mask this, hand sanitizer that, yep. six feet distance. Not one word about, hey, maybe put down the fucking cheeseburger and eat a salad. Yeah. Maybe go for, yeah. get outside, you know, socially distance. Yeah. You know, do what you need to do. But go outside, right. go for a walk. Yeah, move your body. Like you going for yeah. a walk is not going to help you, is not going to make you contract COVID. Get some sleep. You know, yeah. being in an elevator with 12 people might, but like you going for a walk yeah. in the park. It's yeah, not. going outside is not. We, we know that if you're outside, you can go run in a park, you can go hiking, you're yep. good. Like, you just have to use common sense for yeah. a lot of this stuff and not get that's, scared. That's, into it's a tough hole. for a lot of people. Yeah, but it's also, yeah, like, I, you also brought up the other, the other issues now that you're getting like, okay, well, they're, they're driving, oh, Matt, you got to wear masks every single moment, you know, and then now you're getting all these other health issues with having masks. Yeah, now they're saying like you they, they did a, uh, I don't know how big the study was, but of, you know, kids in school wearing the mask for eight hours a day and they found like these these masks when they wear them for eight hours they have you know 40 plus some bacteria growth I was cultures say, in probably there. A lot of germs right and then there was the like four they found like four different strains of like staff you know in yeah, inside of the cool. mask and then you're, you're you know you got these kids who are, are you know some of them immunocompromised or you know they're they're, right. they're outside they're tired they're right you know, their immune system is shot or it's developing and, and now you're putting them in this scenario Right. The tricky situation. Yeah, I mean, every, all that stuff is evolving, like, as we talk. It's the, 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 you know, CDC and all these places, they're constantly changing and pivoting. I mean, they just took something down yesterday that was saying it was airborne, and now they backed away from that statement. And they have to be careful with doing stuff like that. 
because it really confuses the masses of people. One day you say this, and the next day you say this, and and then their confidence it, in the in the organization is shot. It's oh, completely time. shot, big right? Time. You know, big time. I mean, like the the I don't I don't really have any any faith in the WHO anymore when they're sitting there saying, right. you know, in January that nothing's going on, but China's freaking out, and you know, right. then they come down hard on us and say, well, you guys aren't doing enough. What do you mean right. we're not doing enough? You know, help us. You're the World right. Health Organization. That's your job. Your whole job is to help. Right mitigate these pandemics right also if people got outside and got some vitamin d breathed fresh air got out of their houses and relaxed a little bit mm -hmm. not they're just gonna you, you release yep. all that anxiety if you're That's stuck right. watching the news all day and whether you're watching cnn or fox news and whatever it, it may matter. be nope. you're said, you're getting sold media and the only way to sell it is like it's sensationalized and a lot of it is is scary stuff I mean, yeah. the headlines aren't great and the crazy thing too is that you get you even get off tv and you still got the news going on on your instagram on your tiktok on yeah. your snapchat on your twitter on your yeah. you know so it's kind of like they find their way to really creep up on you and they know where people are paying attention to and it's just like right the in your face all the time you know so your anxiety right. levels and your attention level to you know the screen the screen whether it's a tv that's screen, the social the, dilemma they the, talk the, yep exactly about the the way that our phones communicate with us like you'll get a ding or a message and they, it's like a whole role-playing thing in the in the movie basically where like three guys basically are playing like the supercomputer and it's like 24 365 how they're marketing to people all day all day all day through your friends through your facebook through your twitter through your instagram you're, you're so connected you know oh it's so, crazy one of one of my friends sorry i mean no, to no. interrupt you one of my friends left like his tame and polish shirt in my apartment and literally was in my apartment. I was like, yo, can you go get my shirt? And then I looked at my phone and I had a fucking Instagram ad for Tame and Paula's like, yeah. album. I'm like, what the fuck? No, no, like, no, we were talking about that other stuff. We we bought some food or we bought, what was it? The oh yeah, we have like a, some, I don't know, some like health healthy candy, like sour strips. And then I started getting mad Instagram Dude, ads. Yeah, yeah. Not even looking, just talking about it. Just talking about it. And he, and these are just not like, you don't see these anywhere. No, these, these are, are like rare, specialty like, ones. Specialty ones. So I'm like the fact, I was like, that shit's crazy. Man. I've never looked at their page. Never nothing. looked at their page, never searched them, never anything. And he's, now he's getting all these random ads on it. I mean, someone, good for their exactly. marketing team. Someone got in trouble. I don't, I don't want to say it's Zoom because I don't want to be wrong. Uh, it might have been. Um, Instagram was looking at your videos. I yep. think that was. A, FaceTime or somebody were, was able to access channels. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Instagram through your stories. Yep. And, and then I was That's hearing too. Chills, man. I, I don't want to say, but I was hearing platforms like, you know, Zoom or even, you know, so on and so forth using they're starting to study facial recognition the way that we operate our our, our our body language the way we do things are are the way we operate our personalities and they're using that information i've, I've been hearing stuff like that which is really crazy you know I'm, I'm, who knows do you think that we need big tech legislation like you know how how and and where if we do right if we do need the government to step in when is it okay like where do you think that the the amount that they step in is acceptable versus like infringing yeah. on our first amendment right rights. right uh, th that's like probably like the million dollar question right now and i think that west for president 2024 yeah they're, I, they're <laughs> gonna have to figure out something the uh, actually I, won't, I don't want to give out the last thing that's said in the social lemma but it's it's interesting because the bottom line is we have to figure out something because the way at which this is going is not good. I mean, not to be downer, obviously, but in last week there was, I, I, I want to say it was Japan. There were three K-pop um, like stars, same, they were all 36, committed suicide three days in a row, three separate cases. And I mean, I know those are extreme things happening, but that's a reality of what we're seeing on, and, and this all really goes back to like, the way we look at fitness across the board on social media from like, obviously you have like the fit T stuff started, but now it's gotten in a way different world where people can alter and manipulate their bodies and their video. And, and there's so much of that going on. And that's terrifying yep, because yeah. you're, you're people have like, think about like 
magazines like Maxim and all these like men's magazines and you had Cosmo, anything like that, you're looking at an image that maybe was edited a little bit by the photographer. Yeah, right? And they used to freak out about that. They used to go nuts. Right. Now you're doing this all day seeing that. Yeah, I mean all the all the IG story filters, you know, I'm like I, I see girls in real life. I'm like, listen. I saw your Instagram, that. like, you don't have flawless skin. And that's okay. Like, you nah. don't, I don't expect yeah. you to be this, like, Barbie right. doll person. Right. Like, you have to have some flaws. Yeah. I like right. your flaws, you know? I right. have a lot of them. Well, it's like, you know, it's, it's okay. It's controlled, I think everything is just being more of a controlled environment. It's controlled what they want, what they want you to see. Right, it's so, an image right. of that. It's an image. It's all right. about the perception. It's all about the, you know, that bullshit, you know? And I, right. And it's really fucking with people's heads. It's really getting to people's yeah. heads. And, it's and going to cause too. this generation, uh, these kids are getting phones when they're, they're what, seven, eight yes. years old? Yeah, I think my sister was like, and, that's, and that's the thing. Like I, tell, like, I tell people all the time, yeah, I know we're still young, you know, but we were still in that age where these things weren't that big until we were like, no, okay, yeah. out of high school, in college, you know, like, obviously Facebook came out when we were in high school, but Instagram didn't come out till I was in college, you know, like it was like 2012. Oh, I mean, think, think about when we had dial up, you had yeah, to, if someone, up. if someone in your household wanted to use the phone, you had to get off the computer. Like yeah. imagine, imagine I tried to like, my sister was born even at my sister was born in March, 2000. So she doesn't even know about Y2K, <laughs> none of that, you know? So anytime my mother and I joke around with her about, about all of these crazy things that happened when, when it was really in a, it's adolescent stage. My sister's like, that's absurd. There's no way that that happened. I'm like, I promise you, like if mom wanted to call, you know, your dad, I had to get off the computer. I couldn't be on the internet. Yeah. It took 15 minutes just to get on the internet and then 45 minutes and, for the page to load. And you actually appreciate it for having internet, right? Now, yeah. Or like, so or like text phone. minutes. Remember when you'd have to spend half a minute yeah. on one text? You know, you'd be like, why are you uh, texting? Yeah. Why are you texting me? You're going to waste my minutes. <laughs> like, you go A, B, C, yeah. B, fuck, A, yeah. B, D, E. God damn it. I mean, You're like, yeah. I mean, even my friends, like I love FaceTiming them. I love calling them. They're like, dude, why don't you just text me? I'm like, because I want to hear your fucking voice. Like, that's why I, I would have yeah, texted yeah. you if I wanted to text you. Like, yeah. I want to hear a person, which is yeah, why exactly. I called you. Plus, we're watching our phones while we drive now. Right. I mean, if people other are other staring at their phone reading, you yeah. know. I mean, even in TV. even in the Tesla, like now they're thinking about coming out with bigger screens yep. for Tesla. It's like yep. one of my clients was I told them, like, oh well. He wanted to get a truck and he's like, well, I think I'm going to get the F-150. I'm like, you, all you need is a Tacoma. Well, the screen in the Tacoma is small. I'm like, bro, you're talking about a fucking LED screen inside of a truck. Like, right, don't right. worry about that. Yeah, yeah. You shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't even be paying attention right. to those. I'm like, like, I want to look for the truck with the roll that like the, the manual <laughs> roll down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I guess <laughs> yeah, so, no, yeah. The phones. <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> no, they're just going to know. They're just going to know. Uh, uh, you, you're hot. You want your window down? Okay, it's going to go and, down. And, 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 and we haven't even talked about, you know, Neuralink and all oh, that yeah. shit with Elon Musk coming out. I don't That's know, but crazy. If, when that comes out, I definitely want to be one of the first people. Because if, <laughs> if they're putting the internet in my brain, I want to be smarter than everybody. I just want to take That's over true. the world. That's true. Yeah, exactly. You know? Just save up. I'm trying to save up 100K just in case it costs like an absorbent amount of money. And then I'm like, okay, here you go. Now put the internet in my head. But look, speaking of that, like, I want to go into these advancements. So I think it, it's just crazy because, you know, we're all obviously on social media. We obviously all use it. We all have obviously have some kind of influ influence on it. And we know the importance of it. Yet we also know the huge uh, bullshit it brings and, and the problems it brings from a lot of individuals. So where is that point, too, where it's like understanding that if you're not in it and you don't have neck in the game in it, Right. You're not going to survive either. And sadly, but that's, you go to businesses now, it's like, if you don't have social media, yeah. unless you were like yeah. a huge old business like Coca-Cola or one of these been around for jobs right, right, right. years and years that they have so much money, they can, it doesn't matter. But if you're a new business and you're not on social media, you're losing, you're losing. Oh, you're losing. You're losing. Big time. And that's you're getting problem. phased out so fast. It'd make your head spin right now. Yep. Right. You know, you have to, I mean, that's probably that's one thing even for myself before this show started you know i had my instagram was you know a couple hundred people and most of my posts were just like you know here's a cool building and you know mm. here's a park and you, i didn't really know what this thing was or what it was capable of and once it started to be able to do video and do stories and do all this stuff you started seeing kind of like people get really creative with it you know and mm -hmm. Then you, it started kind of turning from this, like, you know, I would say it was just kind of like images of your day to people turning the camera around on themselves 
and now you're seeing who these people are and you're you're interacting with their life and it's almost like now you have a billion reality shows going on yeah. depending on who you want to tune into some of them are really informative some of them are really great some of them are obviously trash and um but that's what it is is that people you have to give a level of access to your life i feel like now yeah. or else you do get phased out and that's even for myself that's a little weird to do even though being on a reality show still doing it on instagram like every day it does it still feels like a lot of work and a chore you know mm, it is. Um, also like, like that. what are you comfortable with you know like do you know like right. do i do i show my kids what if there's a freak that like right. you know, wants to look at my kids like oh, often you know I'm, I'm, i have friends that are literally like josh i won't i won't show my kids face on my instagram never you know right. been, they're they're maybe seven now never shown their face on instagram right you know like Gary, i don't want to take he it. does that yeah, he never shows his family at all. I think one out, time out ever here, he did. you've got parents uh, having have Instagram when they're two years old, and they have separate accounts, and they have That's up true. to. I know there, there are a couple of kids a million five hundred thousand by age four, and they're full on. It's almost like a reality. Yeah, like, yeah it's Huge insane. Baby, baby influencers. You know how's that going to affect the kid's life in the long run? Like that yeah. kid doesn't have a normal we don't, life. Yeah, and the kid didn't even choose that. Yet. The kid didn't even choose that. Yeah. All right. You know, how was it? Yeah. Work, you know, you talk about being on the reality show. How was it working with Netflix? Um, so we, the show was originally shot uh, through NBC okay. um, in 2016. Um, we, uh, I mean, I guess I'll give backstory on it. It was kind of interesting. Uh, a friend of mine actually was like, Hey, they're casting this, this new show called strong. And um, around that time they had done some new auditions for biggest losers. So I had gone in to this casting department. I applied for that. What's that? I applied for that, but they wanted like a, I, at the time, I think they wanted like a, like a, like a family. And I was like, well, I don't, no one in my family wants to be on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. It's weird. Like I remember going in and you know, you just kind of like do your whole story on mm -hmm. the camera and they ask you like 30 minutes of questions. And I'd gone in for a couple rounds and it just whatever. And had been in this office a few times and I emailed them and they said, Oh yeah, we've seen you before. Like, come in for this. And so, I was in New York with actually a client at the time. And so I didn't think much of it. It's just kind of like, I'll go in and I'll, and I'll do it. And I'll just kind of be myself and um, didn't know much about what the show was. And then I got an email back. Hey, we need footage of you doing some cool stuff. Sent that in. They came back, did another one. And then I got an email and said, hey, you need to come out to LA if you're not here. And, you know, you know you're down to at least this round, whatever that meant at the time. So I went out there and there was a whole, there's still a lot of people, like a bunch of waiting rooms, you know, it's all awkward. It's always awkward, you know, everyone's like, every, am I better than you? I think cool. I'm better than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that whole thing. I'm always like, you know, you know, oh, I recognize this guy or I know that girl. And some people are like, give me the eye, like, fuck off, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, you're not getting this, you know. And, and even the it, people that you're like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, fuck. Yeah, you. like, uh, and they slap that piece of paper on your back, like, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you feel like you're auditioning for like a TV show or something. I mean, you are, you know, not a, a an unscripted one. Um, so, kind of went through that. That was interesting because you, you at that point were filling out all of the like. Uh, there was a personality test. I mean, it was literally hours and hours of these just tests, and all of that is for like the producers to kind of get an idea of how what, what do we bring into the show. Right. How much of a psychopath you are, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's so, all they want. And they, they, it has to be a level of conflict. Luckily our show, when it, once we went through that process and I found out I was on it, um, they sequestered us for, this was probably the hardest part of the whole thing. So it was supposed to start on a Monday and they put us in a hotel, but for nine days they were, they were kind of backed up. So we, they took our key, they put us in a hotel room. It was, the girls were in a different wing. We didn't meet the girls. All we knew is that we were the coaches. That's it. We weren't allowed to talk to each other because they wanted all that on camera. So we're all in our respective hotel rooms. They took our key. They don't want us interacting. We cannot leave our hotel room except for 30 to 45 minutes a day. And that didn't start to happen on day two until day two to go to the gym. So you were that ready for COVID. You, you, yeah, were you, ready. Were, you were ready. You were ready. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I was like, like right, let's, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Like six months. I'm good. I've already, we've already been through this. Yeah. We did that. And then they let us out on the ninth day, piled us into a van, 
drove us to like the staging area, which we you know we're figuring like it's going to be like you're going to meet the you know whoever our host is. At the time it was Gabby, and um, they brought us all out. You know we're getting all pumped up. We run a couple intros. We're still not allowed to talk to each other, which is so right. weird, by the way, because you're with these guys now for like six, seven hours, and when we first walk up. To the first like the first actual competition which is kind of cool in reality tv is that we're seeing it for the first time and what we do on that first take is our is like what counts and it was like a we see these like giant 70 foot columns with this big kind of like cylinder in the middle the steel cylinder and you see a sledgehammer with four things of concrete and a pair of goggles and they're like okay guys you're gonna smash through the concrete grab this rope, pull this 500 pound cylinder up to the top, let it fall and how many reps you can get. And we had been literally sitting in this hotel for nine days, a little bit of working out. We had gone to a movie that day, by the way, it's midnight when we shot this. Shit. And I had like popcorn, I'd eaten like shit. And I'm like, all right, this is insane. <laughs> was like barfing on and you couldn't tell yeah. to anybody. Yeah. It was, yeah, dude, it was, I just remember like, the whole competition lasted like five minutes, but people were so hurting on that first one uh, because you're just doing max effort for five minutes, right. pulling this thing, dropping it. These things are hitting and there's, so, it sounds like bombs going off. It's unbelievable. But anyway, I mean, that was like day one, but it was a, it was a, it was a really fun experience. It was definitely challenging being, you know, every day being having the cameras in your face and having um you know probably the, the thing they didn't show was how responsible we were for our um our client or our um our trainee is what they called her our mm -hmm. trainee we, we all had girls and it was you know we cooked for them every single day and trained them all day and they didn't so show we that? never what's that they didn't show that no not a lot of the cooking and that, that was you know 12 14 15 i mean you're with them and you're very responsible the show was the production value on the show was something like, I remember Dave, our producer said it was like three quarters of a million dollars a day to produce the show. Unreal. Oof. It was the most expensive show they've ever shot in reality TV. That was one of the hardest things they had to do was edit that down to a an 40 hour. minute. Yeah. yeah, to an hour. He said the first cut of the first episode was completely different. They tested it and then he, they had to redo a lot of it because wow. they, they have to create storylines. So, mm. I mean, if you watch the show, there are, there are definitely going to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. How it's many fun. seasons? One season, one and done. It was for like, um, you know, it was for half a million bucks. It was, but you don't even think about the money. You just wanted to win. Right. <laughs> the yeah. truth. And our producers would come to us and they would say, do you guys realize that like someone's going to win a lot of money? You guys need to start thinking of it like that because you get so emotionally invested into not losing and going home that yeah. there are all these like weird politics into, it's kind of like a survivor thing where oh, cool. the way they formatted the show, like the winner of each competition was, was able to stay for the next week. And then the bottom team had to go to the, what they called the tower, which was this 70 foot four level thing they created, um, which is, there's a, there's a good story in that because they, they tested this one apparatus and it was basically a squat bar, right? And so for the first two episodes, they had this in and only four guys had to do it. I was one of the four, it was me, Leon, who was a D lineman at Temple, Benny Wiley, who wow. was who's the OU coach, and then Matt Miller, who's a who's a really big, who's a strong CrossFitter, and I was probably by far the weakest of the four who had to do this. So I got in this thing. Oh, Todd Durkin had to do it too. Um, Love Todd. You yeah, had to Todd's squat. Great. Yeah, Todd. Todd's amazing. Like, you have to watch so because we're tied forever because of what happened on the show. I mean, I awesome the amount of respect I have for that guy. And like, if there's anyone that preaches something about mindset, you, know, you can watch him and go, dude, so full of whatever. I can tell you firsthand, he puts that into the most realistic setting I've ever seen. And I remember standing there. I mean, you'll see what happens to me like on live TV. And I'm just like, I just, this can't be real. Like, how does this guy do what he did? Especially at his age with, with you know, you got to realize every time we're performing or doing something on the show, whether you think like, oh, I could easily do that. It's a one-off, meaning you get one shot, and you know that two or three million people are going to see this. So first and foremost, you don't want to, like, fall on your ass, uh, you know? I like, bet. you just don't want to, like, slip yeah. and do something ridiculous. Mm -hmm. or, so you're worried about, like, 
you know, I got to, you know, climb this spinning wall and not fall in the first 10 seconds, you know? Yeah, it's well, amazing. Well, all I know is that me and Josh will definitely. Oh, I'm going to go check it out right I've after we leave. I've seen pieces, here. but I'll definitely dive into that. Oh, it's and good, man. It's fine. But we'll I, tell the our one users. thing I just want to say on the I need squat, a new show to watch. They had, uh, they had, yeah, well, I was going to say they had the squat uh, apparatus and you had to squat the body weight of your contestant a floor. So about 10 feet in this bucket. So we're upstairs and we, do the reps. So you get under this thing and it's like about 85 to 90% of their weight, but it's a big pulley system. So it's crazy. when you get under it, you start at the bottom, you start doing, you're like, okay, this isn't bad. 30 reps, 40 reps. And I'm like, I'm starting to get tired. And I'm like, lean over and she's gone this far, <laughs> like, like two feet. And I'm like, there's no way, dude, I can't do 300 reps of this to get her <laughs> 10 feet. And I'm like doing this thing. And I get so blown up in this thing that um, I'm starting to get like kind of like a tunnel vision. And I'm like, am I going to get kicked off this? You know, I'm going to lose because I can't squat this. And I'm just like, I put the bar in the middle of my back and I start doing like a good morning almost. And oh, we, to make a long story short, I got her up, but I was so messed up from that that I, you could see me. I actually fall twice while trying to walk to the next thing. And, producer our producer dave said that they actually had people coming out that were going to pull me from it because they were like he's just gonna he's gonna like rip his back in half and wow. i was like i'm not going home <laughs> wow no, you're like nah forget that dude well, hey man i mean i think that that was a great way to wrap it up i i definitely am gonna check it out i i highly Same recommend here. everyone else follow my lead with that uh stronger on netflix uh we, i mean we hit an hour man it's uh time this flies was quick Time, yeah, time flies when we're having fun with this thing, man. And yeah, you guys, you guys, this is a, what a great podcast. You guys are so much that. fun, man. Seriously, thank you, glad thank I, you. That, we, that we did this. And yeah, I think it's some good stuff for people. Thank you for coming on. For sure. I mean, we really appreciate all the insight. I know our listeners are, are going to find a ton of value in, in everything that we talked about. And if you're ever in Miami, man, we'll love to have you here again in live. In yeah, we'll, we'll set up. Oh, we'll, dude, I would love to do that. We'll yeah. set up one of those <laughs> squat apparatuses for you in here, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll pass, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, like, no, like, nah, you guys can do it and I'll coach you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, listen, you and I, will we'll cheer Mendez on. He can do it. <laughs> yeah, he can. I'll be caveman, yeah. right? Where can people find you on social media? You have a website? Yeah, they can just find me um, at Wes Okerson, W-E-S-O-K-E-R-S-O-N. Uh, and the show is strong. Sorry, it, you, it was actually stronger at one point. It's just oh, strong okay. on Netflix, yeah. Strong, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much, guys. I want to ask you one final question. Oh, yeah. Like, I always like to wrap it up. What's the biggest piece of advice you can leave off to all our listeners today in one sentence? Um, the one sentence. Um, I'm going to make sure I say this right. Ready, fire, aim. It was something that Joe DeSena said once, and it really, like, stuck with me. Don't overthink something you're going to do start to do it and then figure it out after. Mm -hmm. I think too oh, yeah. often people worry about how is this going to cost and what am I going to do? What if I mess up? Ready, fire, aim. And I love that. You know, I just yeah, think it's, it's a awesome. cool thing and I don't want to take the credit for it, but it's, I think it's a good, it's a good way to look at things because you're never going to be perfect, but at least start. Awesome. Yeah. You heard it. Ready, fire, aim. Thanks Wes. We really appreciate it. Until next time guys. Thank you guys. Have a good Much one. Much love brother.